You are playing that song too fast. Hmm. I am playing this song too fast, aren't I? You haven't talked to your Aunt Ruth in a while. Hmm. No, I haven't talked to my Aunt Ruth in a while, have I? Hello, Orange Book students. Thank you so much for coming back. Today, I am in Leon, and um, we have been visiting Leon and discovering this beautiful city. And later today, we head to Guanajuato. So I'm excited to see more of this beautiful country of Mexico. So, uh, but before I can go to the beautiful city of Guanajuato with my family, you get to learn about tag statements. All right, so as I mentioned, you're looking at tag statements today. Notice that it is a tag statement, not a tag question. So this is going to be a tiny bit different than a tag question, but the grammar is going to be the same. You will just have different emphasis. So let's look to see how that works. So there are three basic rules when it comes to looking at the difference between tag statements and tag questions. Number one, emphasis can be added to a statement by stressing or making that word louder um, the auxiliary or the helping verb. Okay, we will look at what that means in just one second. If no auxiliary verb is present in the sentence, you're going to use do, does, or did um, before the verb. So again, we're going to look at those examples in just one second. Tag questions have a rising intonation. This isn't the bus stop, is it? Because you're actually looking for an answer. However, tag statements have a falling intonation. I am playing this song too fast, aren't I? It's simply confirmation that what I said was true or what the other person said was true and isn't actually seeking a real answer. And then finally, tag questions don't always function as questions, which I kind of just mentioned. They can also be used to confirm a statement, which is why the intonation doesn't go up, it goes down. Let's look at a couple more examples of what all of these mean. Okay, example number one. Man, this is a great book. That is a great book, isn't it? So is, is your helping verb, your auxiliary verb. That is a great book, isn't it? So you have a tag question. However, someone already said it's a good book. So really you're just confirming this is a good book. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Example number two, the color blue looks really good on you. The person responds, the color blue does look good on me, doesn't it? It's not really a question because they already said that it does look good on them. So we just emphasize the color blue does look good on me, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Num or example three, sorry, my numbers are wrong. Example number three, Sarah will come home tomorrow or Sarah is coming home tomorrow. Sarah will come home tomorrow, won't she? Or Sarah is coming home tomorrow, isn't she? They're both two different ways of expressing the future using these tag statements. And then finally, <laughs> example number four. Rachel hasn't accepted the job yet. Ooh, that's right. Rachel hasn't accepted the position yet, has she? Okay, so we take something that we already know and we emphasize it, but we still have a tag question that's really a tag statement confirming that what that person said is true, but we still have to use the concept of a tag question using the opposite, um, the opposite verb that's in the statement, 
affirmative or negative. All right, so get your paper and pencil out and we're going to see if you can do these according to the examples that were given here. Remember, we're also going to use, in the response, we're going to use, you're right. This is how it is, isn't it? So we're going to repeat what somebody has said and then add the tag question, but really in this case, it's a tag statement. So let's see if you can do it. This is what the example is going to look like. The color blue looks good on you. Okay, that's a statement. You're right. The color blue does look good on you. You're confirming that it does look good on that person. And then we have the tag question, which is really a tag statement, doesn't it? All right, let's see how you can do. Number one. Mrs. Taylor gave us a lot of homework yesterday. We're gonna say, you're right. And then we're going to emphasize that what she said is correct and then a tag statement. You're right. Mrs. Taylor did give us a lot of homework yesterday, didn't she? Okay, try to see if you can do the next two without help. Oof, this milk tastes sour. You're right. This milk does taste sour, doesn't it? Aunt Betty hasn't called in a long time. You're right, Aunt Betty hasn't called in a long time, has she? Now for the sake of time, you guys are going to be given a few more examples for practice. This is kind of like practice homework. So these are real life situations and I want you to see if you can give the correct, you're right, and then the next emphasis along with the tag statement at the end. The next slide has all of the answers. There are five examples. See if you can pause the video and give the correct answer. And the next slide will have all of the answers. Okay, so hopefully that was fairly clear in how we emphasize, yes, this is how it is, or she did really do that, um, or she hasn't done that yet. Putting emphasis on it to make it more of a tag statement than a tag question. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on WhatsApp. For your homework, you have workbook pages 135 through 138. And for your bonus homework, I want you to respond in an audio message to me these two questions. You're doing a great job studying English during the quarantine. Or, or and, I'm sorry, you have learned a lot from No Way. So these are statements that I believe to be true. And so hopefully you can confirm that those are true about yourself. So if I don't see you soon, I will see you in the next lesson. Good luck and um, please wish me happy travels in Guanajuato. Hasta luego.